All right, chat. I wanted to show you this. French le Macron coalition left wing bloc neck and neck in first round of French elections. Let's go! Rémi Louf, let me ask you, we have uh, basically two parallel realities. You have yeah. uh, Elisabeth Borne saying, you know, we're the only party or the only coalition about to get a majority in Parliament. We have Jean-Luc Mélenchon saying the party has been defeated. We won the election. So it's a little bit uh, strange for people who watch. They say, I won, I won. Who won, actually? Well, you know, for now, they can both be correct. And I think they both have good arguments in their favor. Uh, first... I mean, if you just look at the numbers that are here uh, with the number of seats, uh, LRM got 255, uh, between 255 and 295, which is, you know, the, apparently the biggest call. But on the other hand, this is from Ipsos, right? Yes. And Ipsos, this is based on their previous polls, and they pulled actually higher, They're like the last polls on Ipsos. So they're actually losing ground compared to the compared to the polls as as numbers will come during the night these numbers will keep being updated i think and in that sense the left is also right in thinking that you know they might get closer uh, we don't know but they might get closer and earlier we said that there was a lot of uncertainty in polling and that's what uh, allowed... Mélenchon even said those seat projections are worth nothing if i I wouldn't say they're right, worth Chad, nothing. I would say there is a huge incident. This just, I'm so glad I waited. Suddenly, the French are paying attention. After choosing between familiar faces, faces on offer through two rounds of April's presidential voting, legislative election campaigns followed. They seem to many like a seven week snooze fest until Sunday night. Now, with first round ballots counted, all to play for in next Sunday's runoffs. The re-elected Emmanuel Macron has one week to convince voters to return a centrist majority to parliament. We'll break down the odds for those uh, set for that second round. Uh, what's the winning argument in what's now a four-way battle with an uncharacteristically united left, the far right, and a weakened but still relevant traditional uh, conservative bloc? We'll ask if the French want continuity or change with a particular eye to races where current or ex-cabinet members are under pressure, like in the eastern suburbs of Paris, where the organizer of a successful hotel cleaning staff strike leads uh, against former sports minister and Olympic swimming medalist Roxana Marassianou. Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at Let's whether or not Macron's go. majority is in doubt with us. Uh, he campaigned for Emmanuel Macron back in 2017. Lex Paulson, executive director of the School of Collective Intelligence at Morocco's Mohamed VI Polytechnic University. Thanks Good to be with you. So the way it works in France, chat, is you have they have a presidential system and they have a parliament and they have a prime minister. Now, typically, the president's is a party is the majority of parliament but from the way i understand the french system to work and if there's any french people that are, are here to correct me feel free but from what i understand if the parliamentary elections go differently the prime minister runs the country and the president becomes a figurehead and it looks like macron narrowly won his uh presidential election against the far right and now after that presidential election, Melanchon announced a united left. And now in the parliamentary elections, the united left is surging. And it's a good, it, it appears to be like it's going to be a battle between the centrists versus the left. Uh, thanks as well from Brussels to Sophie Rouser, a policy this is advisor what you're referring to? to the uh, European United of... This is what you're referring to, Eeyore? Cohabitation is a system of divided government that occurs in semi-presidential systems such as France, where the president is from a different political party than the majority of the members of parliament. It occurs because such a system forces the president to name a premier who would be acceptable to the majority party within parliament. Thus, cohabitation occurs because of the duality of the executive. An independently elected president and a prime minister who must both be acceptable both to the president and the legislature. So it's going to be... M Melanchon may actually be able to wrest power away from Macron. Left a block to which unbowed France of Jean-Luc Mélenchon uh, belongs. Correct, Thanks for joining us. Thank you. 
also in the Belgian capital. Patricia Chanon, a municipal councillor in the northern city of Abbeville for Marine Le Pen's uh, national rally uh, party. How long is Abbeville to Brussels by car? Not, it's what, it's an hour? Three hours. Three hours. Oh, I got that wrong. All right. It's quite 300 a kilometers. Oh, yeah. OK. Thanks for being Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me tonight. Thank you. Annabelle Lever is uh, back All with right, us, professor psycho. of political philosophy at uh, Sciences Po, who was there on election night as the surprises began to uh, yeah. to unfold. Thanks for joining us again. Pleasure. The uh, France 24 debate where you can join the conversation you have on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24Debate. So, DSA debate, Chad. Emmanuel DSA Macron debate. owns bragging rights to becoming the first French president re-elected with a sitting majority. In the past, there have been presidents re-elected, but it was always while they were in opposition. Now, it seems, comes the hard part. It's harder to say, give me a mandate when you're no longer the new kid in town. Sinead McCausen has more. A neck and neck finish. Left wing alliance party NUPS and presidential party Ensemble led the first round results in France's legislative elections on Sunday. Jean Luc Mélenchon's coalition, the new ecological and social popular union, is set to challenge French President Emmanuel Macron's parliamentary majority. For the first time in the Fifth Republic, a newly elected president has failed to establish a majority in the legislative election that follows. Coming second place, Ensemble can expect between 255 and 295 seats in the Assembly. A close call as they need 289 for an outright majority. France's Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne is now calling for more support. We have a week of mobilisation ahead of us. One week to convince one week to obtain a strong and clear majority. For far-right Marine Le Pen, the leader of the national rally will go through to the second round in her constituency in Pas de Calais. Coming third place, Le Pen did not align herself with either party. In the constituencies that will see a face-off between Republic on the move and New Pest in the second round, I invite you not to choose between the destroyers from above and the destroyers from below. And the destructeurs d'en bas. If Macron's coalition falls short of a majority, he will be forced to find support from other parties to pass laws. Yeah, in the old days, uh, Lex Paulson, uh, this is the day when there's lots of calculating. Uh, uh, usually in the past, um, you had lots of three-way battles because you, you had, but because it's 12 and a half percent of, of the eligible voter, exactly. registered voters mm -hmm. to make it uh, to round two of legislative elections, and we'll talk more about the abstention rate later. It means there's only eight three-way races. Candidates, by the way, have until s Tuesday evening uh, to uh, to register for the second round. Not too many expected to bow out. So really, it's about mobilizing the troops. Were you surprised, first of all, by the results? Uh, I, I was a little bit surprised after five years of of um, of, a, of a political organization which was brand new in 2017 and which nevertheless uh, was very strong on the ground. I was surprised at um, that Emmanuel Macron seemed to make the mistake a little bit of Barack Obama uh, in 2010, uh, which was to spend more of his energy as as president on governing than on campaigning. He spent very little energy on campaigning, and that showed, frankly, in the level of organization of these campaigns. Now, in America, we are arguably spend far too much money and time uh, on campaigning. But you say mobilization to mobilize voters, you need to go talk to them. And campaigns must develop mechanisms both online and in person. And, and studies still show, still show that in-person conversations are much more likely to mobilize a voter than an email or a text. And so you need all of the above. And these campaigns, frankly, didn't do that much campaigning. Hey, we're we are a taking a look at Macron's the French part. elections where the United Left is taking Stop. on and made defeat Emmanuel Macron, the center-right, President beloved by the scumbag Barack Obama. Serious business, cat swag. Thank you both for the subs. Already do that when 
the whole brand is around one man. And if that if Macron doesn't come to your constituency, can you campaign? Uh, you can if right you understand what moves the voters in your circonscription. Um, there are some en marche deputies that I've gotten to know a little bit who uh, had a knack for understanding what was the story that was being told in that district, whether it's Chartres, whether it's you know central Paris, whether it's Bordeaux, and um, it's, vo voters are mobilized by a whole range of things. It's not only the president. The president is the strongest force, but he's not the only one. And the question is, what kind of story did the, could the deputies tell? And did they have the operation to tell it? I think some deputies that did well this time around, and En Marche will elect uh, a, a very sizable number of deputies, but the ones who will succeed are the ones who developed outside of their dependence on the Macron brand, an additional story or TikTok, set of stories that could mobilize marching? voters in different probably ways. probably going to end up uh, taking Patricia a look at Chanel, Let me ask you, uh, mayors I know are personalities in French politics. Are members of parliament known by constituents in your where you are? Do people know the name of the member of parliament? Yeah, they, they do if the member of parliament is actually active on the on the terrain. And um, uh, members of parliament go into the constituencies in France at the end of every week. They they are in part they are in session at the beginning of the week, at the end of the week they are in the they are supposed to be in their constituencies. National rally is basically um, the Nazis. Uh, all the members of parliament that the Rassemblement National far right uh, had elected in two thousand seventeen all uh, ended in the first round of these legislative elections with over 40 percent, which really shows that they were there and doing their job and that people uh, want to see them again because, of course, they will be re-elected. Re I think what really the problem was with this election is that, um, firstly, uh, Mr. Macron promised um, um, reforms of our electoral system. We have two tire system in France, which is very favorable to big parties. He promised to change this, but didn't do it. And the trends that we've seen over the past years in France has been a slide in, in turnout for elections, which of course is extremely bad for uh, the, the function of, uh, functioning of a democratic country. Secondly, the presidential elections um, were uh, the second round of the presidential elections was everybody against Marine Le Pen. Do not forget that. Uh, the left wing, the ultra left wing rallied and, uh, and, and, and asked to vote for, for, for Mr. Macron. So did what is that, whatever is remnant of the, of the uh, Républicain, uh, Républicain in, front, in France. And you can see today, I think, with the very low turnout, first of all, the dissatisfaction of the French people with the electoral system. And secondly, uh, the disapproval of, of Mr. Macron's policy. In 2017, he was a virgin, brand new candidate. Mr. Macron now has a um, uh, has a mandate to show of what he's done, and we have seen the yellow vests in the streets. We had huge manifestations against the reforms he wanted to carry out with the uh, retirement age. So I think we have show this uh, this first round has showed a tremendous rejection of Mr. Macron and of his policies. When you look at total votes, Sophie Rouser, though, uh, the centrist coalition still polling neck and neck. I know there's a big argument going on today about who got more votes in the end because there are dissident candidates. So I won't go into that. But the but the 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 centrist coalition did poll a lot of votes uh, a, a, a heading into those runoffs. What are your expectations? Yes, everything will you know, depend on the participation rate next Sunday for the second round of the election. Uh, what we have seen so far is the huge abstention level, and this is very frightening. On the side of Macron's members, what they need is basically uh, the right wing, the Republican, as they are called, to vote in uh, their favor. Uh, whereas for us, we need the voters to actually come to the to the to the votes on Sunday. So the abstention is, you know, the best ally of Macron. It's basically its lifeboat. Um, whereas for us, we really count on democracy. S what we have seen on this Sunday does bring us a big smile because it's historical. Uh, you need to understand maybe a lot of People who are watching right now uh, are not very familiar with the French political system, but since we had that reform placing the legislative elections right after the presidential election, there used to be this tendency of giving, you know, a sort of confidence voting for the for the president just elected a few weeks before. So what we've did we did with the left 
uh, is that we brought the left back in a, in a situation where it was really, really um, important for people to know what actually they will have at the end of their work, uh, working lifetime as a, as a pension um, or, or in the different public services, you know, things that do matter for people at the end of the day did make this huge result for the left uh, and the coalition called NUPS. All right. So, yeah, the, the, the new popular union, as that coalition uh, is called. Um, By the way, it, France it, spends one percent of what we do on campaign financing, and then they say very low turnout. They're referring to a 28 percent abstention level, a near historic high, which, of course, pales the comparison of our average of 40 percent. Oh, yeah. And that's in a presidential year. In a midterm year, the majority of people abstain from voting. Yeah, America sucks. It's interesting when you break down the numbers, Annabelle Lever. Uh, the uh, the left Look at uh, this is shit, it the fact baby. that uh, this is, as I said at the outset, kind of like a midterm election for uh, for an incumbent who's no longer the new kid on the block, or is it the mm. fact that the left managed this time to be united? And by the way, but they didn't get any more votes, I gather, than they had individually before. So it's not. They lost. I mean, it's a bit disappointing. It's not as though they managed to mobilize people to come out for them. I'd expected, actually, that it would be much more dramatic and exciting. But I guess not everyone's cope, obsessed with politics. Cope, 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 cope. Your party literally just won a presidential election and that it can't get parliamentary elections? This is fucking horseshit. Fucking horseshit. And by the way, they're going to do another round. And I guess we'll have to wait and see. I guess we'll have to wait and see, huh? Politics in the way that we are. But it was really weird. So apparently their actual votes aren't any higher. On the how other you, hand... How do you explain that? Can I just say something? I thought the thing with Marine Le Pen is she's, she has to go again because there weren't, the turnout wasn't so high. So she may have got yeah, she 40%. Got more than, she, in her, in her she district, got 54. she got she more got than half the vote. Yeah, but, but, but the she, turnout was too low. But the, but the rules are you need to have a, a, a certain percentage of the yeah. electorate show up on the day. So yeah, she's so going to go couldn't even round, manage that. Which she'll win handily, uh, I suppose, yeah. ne next Sunday. Um, the uh, l Let's talk about those some of those key races where yeah. and there's something like 14 or 15 cabinet members uh, who are running in this election, including the prime minister. Not campaigning or debating um, after that presidential. In the Before eastern the suburbs of, of Paris, a constituency with the outgoing member of parliament uh, was from Emmanuel Macron's party. Mm -hmm. uh, the former, she's not a current minister, sports minister, Roxana Maasinanu, she's trailing Rachel Keke by 13 points. First run for office for both. Rachel Keke, born in Ivory Coast, led a successful strike by hotel cleaning staff. I don't have any words. A new chapter is beginning in France. A cleaning lady, or anyone, can now be a part of the National Assembly. We can clearly hope in a victory. I thank all the voters that trusted me. Uh, is this kind of story uh, a tale of what's what we're, we're, the matchups we're going to see, Lex Paulson, or is this story an outlier? I think it's, it's actually very um, uh, exemplary in that you see a candidate who knows how to organize mm -hmm. winning in a low turnout Sam election. Jack. And this is the thing. I, I disagree with the analysis that um, that Sophie j just just gave that that low turnout is good for Macron because low turnout produces surprises. And Macron doesn't want to surprise surprises uh, next Sunday. He wants predictable, reliable results, especially for his dozen or so ministers, including several running in circumscription in Paris who did not get uh, the first place uh, in the first round, who will be out of government, and I know I know a couple of them, they don't have a plan B, right, for if they don't win the, the, the second run of the election. So uh, I think uh, show that this Let's this, this woman go, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Val de Marne, she also uh, very the idea that the left spontaneously uniting after a, a couple of weeks is then going to expect to be uh, uh, massively outperforming. Pathetic. But guess what? They're going to take it away. They're taking away the majority, baby put her skills as an organizer to work going to convince voters. And it shows that in a low turnout election, when you give voters a reason face to face to vote, that can make all the difference. So I think the candidates who are going to do well will be following her example. All right. If all those who stayed home uh, had a political party, well, 
they'd have already won by a landslide. We wouldn't be here <laughs> talking about the second round. Uh, this is uh, what the results from the first round lo would look like. And again, if you the, the numbers. So instead, it's the far left uh, coalition there. Uh, the left wing coalition would be on 12 percent. Uh, the uh, Emmanuel Macron's party in purple there would be on 12% uh, uh, as well, and the far right would be uh, on uh, a little uh, under 9%. That's, uh, again, we've been talking about it, how uh, voter apathy, which, by the way, is not a new ailment, uh, but a steadily worsening chronic condition. If you look at French politics uh, uh, over the years. As centrism uh, some rises, say that, uh, so does abstention. It's gotten sizably worse so since they reduced, people just reduced the mandate of the president, think Annabelle change. Lever, from seven uh, to five years. Is this a French problem or a European problem? Well, I think everyone has a problem, but what I can't get over, I, I just, I'm gobsmacked. The idea that in Saint-Denis, parts of Saint-Denis and parts of Marseille, only Working less than 10 percent voted, yeah. less than 10 percent. I mean, I've never heard of anything like this. I mean, maybe parts of Eastern Europe, but this isn't this doesn't seem to me a normal level of abstention. It's not, you know, sort of a secular increase when barely part of your population votes in a democracy. Sophie Rouser, these are areas yeah, that uh, were turned out for Jean-Luc Mélenchon was high during the presidential election first Centrists round. Centrists are going to kill us, uh, man. Why are people in those working class districts not voting in legislative elections? It's a hard question. If there was a magic bullet to solve this issue, um, we would have done it by, by far um, right now. But it's what to convey How a bit, to, what's, uh, to react a bit to what the previous speakers were saying. I think there is something very French to a democratic crisis that also happens in other European countries and across the globe. But. I was saying, I don't know if you, you might remember last time I came, I was explaining that one of the very problem of the political system in France is this, you know, Republican monarchy that we have. So we yeah. have, we convey huge powers to the president. And then, of course, people sort of understand that the National Assembly doesn't really play a role. What we have achieved here with the left coalition of noobs is to bring back people to the to the poll, polling stations uh, to vote to have something to to care about because the macron was very silent about his own political program we said if you have macron you will have the retirement age at 65 we want to have it at the age of 60. So those are kind of like concrete example we were giving on on the ground to mobilize people again and to understand that that it is not constitution, constitutional uh, that, the, that the president have so much power. We are going way above the constitutional power. This is why also we have pledged, pledged for um, Jean-Luc Mélenchon uh, being prime minister because constitutionally the president does propose a name to the National Assembly, but the National Assembly can vote him down. So depending on the majority that we will get on next Sunday, we can actually have Jean-Luc Mélenchon becoming a prime minister. Why didn't he uh, run for re-election in his district? I think, it, you know, in full transparency, there is a time where you need to sort of fall back and leave room for the next generation. This is what we have done in the last five years. Mathilde Panot is now the chairman of the, of the, of the group, of the parliamentary group, hopefully maybe of the next one. Uh, Adrien Quatennens is the one leading the France Insoumise movement. Manuel Bompard was the one heading the campaign. There is room for a um, younger, uh, younger Insoumise generation. So he wants to come. step aside and become prime minister, is that it? Yeah, prime minister is, a, is quite a good and challenging goal, I think. And then <laughs> not he really will stepping not, aside. <laughs> even in the case that we lose, he will not vanish. Sorry? But, but not really stepping aside, said Lex. Uh, Patricia <laughs> Chagnon, uh, let, me, let me ask you, uh, how do you see a, a, a reform to, to redress those imbalances uh, as described by the panel between the executive branch, which is too powerful, and uh, They should just have the elections all in one day. I mean, that's the, that's the secret, like, separate legislative elections and shit, it does, it's fucking stupid. ...which doesn't have enough power. 
Um, I think that the low turnout, um, as uh, the other speakers were saying, which is which is a trend that's been um, uh, aggravating itself in France, um, is something we really need to address. And actually, Macron had said he was going to address the problem when he got elected in 2017, but subsequently apparently forgot about it. Um, that it's very important to realize in France, with our two-tier electoral system, um, and I can just cite the example of, of my own party, the Rassemblement, National of Marine Le Pen, that in 2017, in the second round, uh, Marine Le Pen had 32 percent. Uh, I just mentioned for the auditors that this time we did nine points better. She did nine points better than in the presidential elections in 2017. Um, but we only had seven, subsequently, seven members of parliament out of the uh, 577. So you can see the imbalance. So 32 percent the population who voted Marine Le Pen were subsequently represented by seven members in the French parliament who didn't even have a group. So that makes people very dissatisfied. Now, this is only a recent example, but I can give you the example of the referendum in 2005 for the um, European constitution, where the French voted against and subsequently, with a bit of artistic politics, um, it was pushed through anyway uh, some time later. Um, French people have the feeling that when they are voting, um, uh, they are not being heard. And this is quite true. I mean, the left has totally abandoned uh, the, the, the working class electorate in France. They have massively come to the Rassemblement National and uh, the, 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 the noobs, which is sort of uh, rejoicing in their in their pr pretended victory or making everyone believe that there is a huge victory this time around. Um, I would like to remind you that if you add the scores of the four parties that compose noobs in, in, in that composed noobs already in 2017, Noops has actually lost um, uh, adhesion uh, when you when you compare it, and I think the exact number, if if my calculation is right, is somewhat over one one percent. Mr. Macron lost eight percent since 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 2017 in in the legislative elections, and the only party that has known growth is the Rassemblement National. Uh, sorry, Macron lost six percent in the since 2017, and we, and Marine Le Pen, the Rassemblement National, has an increase of. 8%. So there is a dynamic in France of the electorate to be heard, uh, to have uh, constitutional reforms, to have electoral reforms, because yeah, we believe is, I said, very much far, that we need to have more crazy, proportional election. Um, and uh, the dynamics is definitely on our side. So I think that unless we reform the electoral system in France, unless there is truly participation and that the elector all rep all French people can be properly represented in the, in the parliament, um, Sadly, very sadly, uh, this abstention will probably continue. Sophie Rouser, you agree? Yeah, I sort of agree. I mean, nobody's pride about uh, the, 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 the abstention level in France. The difference between Macron and the NUPS coalition is that we actually have proposals. He's just saying that, like for the Convention uh, on Ecology, that he will convene, you know, a huge uh, gathering of citizens and, and have the mes message uh, uh, passed into legisl legislation. Well, this is, you know, what he already promised last time, and he did nothing. So there's a huge set of possible messages measures from the less radical one to the most radical one that could actually make a lot of good this to the, the democracy the left and the right. of, the left of our regime. The left is always regime. like, oh, what policy uh, proposals instance, can we, we do? Start by what material changes can we make? the legislative and elections the right away from the presidential election. And, we could and also narrative. hear uh, the message of the Yellow Vest movement that we're asking for a RIC, for a, you know, a citizen uh, referendum. Um, referendum. Um, a, a citizens, so the fact that the it citizens could trigger a referendum. Uh, and in our program, this is actually the first chapter that we have is about the democratic urgency. So we have already like a lot of pages and to recommend different tools to make the yeah, best possible use of citizens' involvement on a daily basis in our democracy. Yeah. We've spelled that. Can I react to that? Just very quickly, Patricia Chagnon. Yeah, just just very quickly. You know, what's been really confusing is that I listen to Miss Rosa, and uh, um, I, I tend to I tend to agree with her. And the, but the confusion for the French electorate today is that for the presidential election, uh, these same left wing parties asked to vote for Macron, and today they're fighting Macron. So the French people just don't understand. I think these pol politicians because are just making agreements fascist. to get their position. Hey, hey, many of the left wing parties said abstain.
But they didn't want a fascist to be in charge. It's not very complicated, idiot. Politicians elected, but are not there to represent their interests. I think there is great confusion um, because political parties are not assuming their political stance. And that also... All right, chat, listen. We will, we will come back with more coverage of the French election. Are you watching the stream unsubbed? You're making income inequality worse. You are doing anti-praxis. We are the only Twitch stream that will not accept scam advertisers, and I will never fuck you over by selling you crap.